Hello students welcome to my online class today we will read the second part of our lesson lost spring written by anish jain and title for the second part is i want to drive a car so let's read the story mukesh insists on being his own master i will be a motor mechanic he announces so now the hero of this story is mukesh uh, who belongs to the family of bengal makers now he has decided to be his own master and wanted to be a motor mechanic but his he was determined and confident to choose his new occupation and this act was really very praiseworthy and daring as none among their whole generations has ever dream of going out of their profession do you know anything about cars i asked but when mukesh shared his dream with the author then she asked him if he know anything about the cars i will learn to drive a car he answers looking straight into my eyes his dreams look like a mirage mirage amidst the dust of streets that fill his own ferozabad famous for its bangles so ferozabad is famous for making bangles and mukesh and his whole family members are engaged in making bangles but while giving answers to the author mukesh seems to be very confident and he said that very soon he will learn to drive a car but at that time it seems to be a mirage an illusion because it was not an easy task to move out of their profession it is the center of india's last glowing industry where uh families have spent generations working around furnaces welding glass making bangles for all the women in the land it seems so all the people inhabiting ferozabad are busy in making bangles so their only occupation is bangle making and the whole city seems to be surrounded by uh bangles Mukesh's family is among them. None of them know that it is illegal for children like him to work in the glass furnaces with high temperatures in dingy cells without air and light. That the law, if enforced, could get him and all those twenty thousand children out of the hot furnaces where they slog their daylight hours, often losing the brightness of their eyes. Now. the author realizes that all these children and their parents they are ignorant about the law that is children below the age of 18 are not subjected to work in the hazardous industries like the bangle making and these little children uh, they uh, spend their whole day in the dingy cells Uh, where there was a dim light and they lose their eyesight because their eyes gets habituated to the dim light and they feel it difficult to uh, see in the bright light uh, so if honestly the law gets imposed then 20000 children like mukesh can get liberty out of this industry uh mukesh eyes beam as he volunteers to take me home which he proudly sees is being rebuilt we walk down stinking lanes of choked with garbage past homes that remains hovel with crumbling walls wobbly doors no windows crowded with families of women and animals existing in a premial state as we have seen that author is very friendly with his poor children so 
Mukes uh, requested her to come to her village. So while accompanying Mukes, she saw on the way that the lanes were blocked, drainage were blocked, and a foul smell was surrounding the atmosphere, and the walls of the houses seems to be crumbling, and doors were shaking. There were no windows, and a lot of crowd of people, and she saw humans and animals living together in a premial in the in a very pitiable and unhygienic conditions. He stops at the door of one such house, brings a wub, a bangs a wobbly iron door with his foot and pushes it open. So as soon as Mukesh reaches his house, he kicks the door open and then they enters the house. When we enter a half built shack, in one part of it thatched with dead grass is a firewood stop over which sits a large vessel of sizzling spinach leaves. On the ground in large aluminum platters are more chopped vegetables. So as the author enters the room, she saw that at the corner there were dead grass and uh, a woman was walking at a traditional shula. She was uh, lighting up firewoods in the stop and making uh, spinach leaves and on the ground she also saw plates full of chopped vegetables. A frail young woman is cooking the evening meal for the whole family and she saw that at the chula there was a lady who was cooking food for the whole family and she seems to be very weak. She is the wife of Mukesh's elder brother and this lady is Mukesh's elder brother's wife. Not much older in years, she has begun to command respect as the Bahu, the daughter-in-law of the house already in charge of three men, her husband Mukesh and their father. So this lady is the daughter-in-law of the house and she is taking care of these three male members, Mukesh, her husband and her father-in-law. When the older man enters, she gently withdraws behind the broken wall and brings her veil closer to her face. As custom demands, daughter-in-laws must veil their faces before male elders. So when the elder man means the head of the family or Mukesh's father enters the room, then this lady, she moves gently behind the wall and covered her head with a veil and as it was the custom in their village that daughter-in-laws are not allowed uh, must daughter-in-laws must cover their head before the male elders as a part of respect uh, in this case the elder is an, an impoverished bangle maker and here this old man he is a bangle maker Despite long years of hard labor, first as a tailor, then as a bangle maker, he has failed to renovate a house, send his two sons to school. All he has managed to do is to teach them what he knows, the art of making bangles. Now this old man he expresses his grief that though he has worked hard, first as a tailor and then as a bangle maker, but he failed to renovate his house due to lack of funds. And also he was unable to send his two sons to a better school. But he is contented that at least he has taught the art of Bengal making to his next generation. It is his karam, his destiny, says Mukhi's grandmother, who has watched her own husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass of bangles. Then after, the author has introduced us to the grandmother of Mukesh. So, his grandmother says that it was their destiny. So, Bengal making 
is the only is their only occupation and she has seen her husband going blind while polishing the glass can a god given line is ever be broken she implies so she raises a question that how can a man uh, go out of his destiny so this their caste their occupation is the gift given by the god so they had accepted their destiny uh, willingly born in the caste of bengal makers they have seen nothing but bengals in the house in the yard in every other houses every other yard every street in ferozabad so as a grandmother was born in the family of bengal makers so throughout her life she has seen bengals all around her she grew up and became old a uh, grown old in seeing these colorful bangles all around her spirals of bangles sunny gold paddy green royal blue pink purple every color born out of the seven colors of the rainbow lie in mounds in unkept yards are piled on four uh, wheeled hand carts pushed by the young men along the narrow lanes of sandy top then this is spiral of bangles of different colors pink sunny paddy green royal blue and these all colorful uh spirals of bangles can be seen placing unkempt uh placing in molds in unkempt yards and which later were piled on the wheeled hand carts which were drawn by this young man along the narrow lanes of sandy towns for selling and in dark hut mans next to the lines of flames of flickering oil lamps sit boys and girls with their father and mothers welding pieces of colored glass into circles of bangles their eyes are more adjusted to the dark than the light outside that is why they often end up losing their eyesight before they become adults then again at the corner of the room she saw that some young boys and girls they were helping their father and mother in their occupation in giving proper shape to the bangles and their eyes were more adjusted to the dark than the bright light of the day that is the reason why they lose their eyesight as soon as they grow up and become adults savita a young girl in a drab pink dress sits alongside an elderly woman soldering pieces of glass as her hands move mechanically like the tongs of machine i wonder if she knows the sanctity of the bangles she helps to make now again the author is introducing us to a new girl named sabita and she was sitting beside an elderly woman and who was busy in soldering these bangles but but the author realizes that this young girl is unaware of the sanctity or piousness of these bangles which she is making it symbolizes an indian woman suhag auspiciousness in marriage so these colorful bangles are the symbolic of woman suhag or well being of her husband it will drawn on her suddenly one day when her head is draped with a red veil her hands dried dyed red with hina and red bangles rolled into her wrist and this reality the savita will realize this reality the day when she will become a bride when her head will be covered with the red veil her hands will be dyed red with hina and then these colorful bangles will be rolled into her hands wrists she will then become a bride like the old woman besides her who became one many years ago the author can easily see the colorful bangles in the wrist of the woman who was sitting beside the beside savita she still has bangles on her wrist but no light in her eyes 
so she has these bangles in her wrist means that still she uh, her husband is alive but there was no light in her eyes no happiness in her life ek waqt sir bhar khana bhi nahi khaya she says in a voice of dream joy so she exclaimed that throughout her life she uh, is unable to have food full to her satisfaction uh, she has not enjoyed even one full meal in her lifetime that's what she has repeated her husband an old man with a flowing beard says i know nothing except bangles all i have done is make a house for the family to live in and again her husband said that he is happy and convinced that at least through this bangle making he has earned enough to manage for a house to live in hearing him one wonders if he has achieved what many have failed in their lifetime he has a roof over his head and hearing his voice it seems that really he has achieved a large goal because having a house to live in itself is a great achievement in in a man's life the cry of not having money to do anything except carry on the business of making bangles not even enough to eat rings in every home so the lament or the sadness of not having much money whatever they earn is not even sufficient to carry on their businesses and there was not sufficient food to eat the young men echo the lament of their elders so the new generation they are simply complaining uh, about their uh, ancestors little has moved with time it seems in ferozabad year of mind numbing toil have killed all initiatives and ability to dream so if we look uh, ferozabad very closely then it seems that nothing has changed with time and though these people they are working very hard day and night but still they don't got the ability to dream nobody wanted to come out of this profession why not organize yourselves into a cooperative i asked a group of young men who have fallen into vicious circle of middlemen who trapped their fathers and forefathers now on listening to these young men the author advised them to organize themselves into cooperative and to set themselves free from the clutches of these middlemen but even if we get organized we are the ones who will be hauled up by the police beaten and dragged to jail for doing something illegal they say but then they replied that whenever we try to organize ourselves then we are beaten and sent to jail by the police man for doing something illegal means even the police and the local representatives they don't want us to be get uh, to be organized there is no leader among them no one who could help them see things differently their fathers are as tired as they are so now the author realizes that there is lack of leadership they don't have any able leader who can help them to think differently and they are as tired as their uh fathers were they talk endlessly in a spiral that moves from poverty to apathy greed and injustice so simply all the people seems to be complaining about their poverty they were about their apathy greed and injustice done to them but nobody wanted to act for it listening to them i see two distinct worlds the one of the family caught in a wave of poverty burdened by the stigma of caste in which they are born so now uh, having very close observation of the village and conditions of the mukesh family and his neighborhood the author realizes two factors which are responsible for uh, the miserable condition of this people is the caste stigma 
these people don't they really accepted that they are born only for making bangles so no one wants to come out of this occupation they never even thought for adopting a new occupation they are not mentally prepared and second one is a vicious circle of sahukars middlemen policemen keepers of the law bureaucrats and the politicians and the second factor which is responsible is that the politicians the government officials policemen sahukars they are creating obstacles in their progress these people don't want them to be united into cooperatives so these two factors collectively is making uh the life of these poor bengal makers more pitiable uh together they have imposed the baggages on the child that he cannot put down and these two factors combinedly uh, together is uh, imposing a baggage imposing restrictions on the child on the new generations which they never come out before he is aware he accepted as naturally as his father but before a young child become aware or started thinking about his aim or ambition he naturally at this time also he naturally accepts his destiny as his fathers or forefathers has accepted so they don't get enough time to think about their themselves to do anything else would mean to dare and daring is not part of their growing up and if anyone from the bengal making family tries to think somewhat different it means daring act it need a lot of courage and courage is not a part of their growing up throughout the life they were simply taught to adopt the occupation of their fathers very naturally and readily without any resistance when i sense a flash of it in mukesh i shuddered but when the author had seen that mukesh had that sense of uh, that spark and now he wanted to do something different then really the author felt happy to know that at least there is someone who is trying to change his profession who has even dreamed to work differently i want to be a motor mechanic he repeats he will go to a garage and learn but the garage is long way from his home i will walk he insists so now mukesh has finally determined decided to work as a motor mechanic and as the garage is a little uh, away from his house then he again insists that he will walk to the garage but he has finally decided that he will walk as a car mechanic do you also dream of flying a plane he suddenly he is suddenly silent no he says staring at the ground again the author tries to ask some stupid question to mukesh she asks him whether he also dreamt of flying a plane then um, mukesh become silent and embarrassed with the author's question and he felt very regret and unhappy he is content to dream of car that he seems halting down the streets of his town uh, generally he has seen the cars moving very fast in the streets or on the highways so he has developed uh, some attraction and curiosity for driving a car therefore he has decided that first he will become a car mechanic and then he will learn a learn to drive the car but few airplanes fly over firozabad but as firozabad is a very not so popular city so only few planes flew over firozabad at that time so he never dreamed of flying a aeroplane so thus we see that how mukesh has 
taken a daring step and dreamed of a new occupation which was really uh, appreciable the author through uh, in this lesson sometimes asks a peculiar questions silly questions as we have seen that she advises a uh, sahib to go to his school even knowing that his main priority is to get food and again uh, mukesh is hardly preparing for uh, be a car mechanic and then she asked him of flying a plane uh, so this is the end of the lesson link for your assignment is provided in the description box a video of the next chapter will be uploaded soon till then take care and goodbye thanks for watching no ji